Hi, my name is Mike Kwiatkowski. I'm a partner here at McLeod Law. I'm here today to talk about uh, commercial lease enforcement and commercial lease litigation. McLeod Law, we do um, everything with commercial leasing. We do the negotiation of leases, we do the drafting of leases, and as I just suggested, I do the enforcement of leases. In January and February of every, every year, we tend to see the highest rates of defaults with tenants uh, in commercial leasing situations. And in 2023, this is another perfect storm uh, for about five or six reasons that I'm going to get into right now. First of all, we have weather. We've been fortunate to have a pretty decent January so far in terms of not being having not too much cold weather, but the winter is far from over. And uh, consumers don't like going out in cold weather. Uh, they use skip the dishes, which robs restaurants of tips and liquor sales. And in general, capacities are down uh, in restaurants and other commercial establishments. So we see weather being a factor. We also have the advent now uh, of higher interest rates, which we didn't have in 2022. And so we have tenants who have lines of credit and loans who are, able, are having difficulty paying those down. And so we see tenants starting to default on those loans, which causes then a default uh, with their uh, leases. Third, we have reduced capacities. We don't have patios that are open. That sort of ties in with weather. So we have a smaller footprint of, uh, of an establishment, such as a restaurant or a bar, that they're just not able to, to uh, have the capacity that they used to have uh, during the summer months. We also see staffing issues. We still have lingering effects from COVID and now we have the flu on top of that. So we have uh, establishments, whether it's a retail establishment or a restaurant or bar, still having staffing issues. Uh, one of the large factors that we're seeing with defaults are the post-holiday blues, where first of all, people have ran out of money. They spent it all during the holiday season. We don't have the sales. We don't, uh, such as Black Friday or holiday sales. You just don't really have that in January and February. And people have what they want. Most people have gotten what they want over the holiday season or, or during Christmas, and uh, they don't need uh, the things that they may have needed uh, or required uh, in the fall. One of the most important uh, aspects of defaults that we're seeing is that uh, tenants are, are defaulting on their abatement or the deferral agreements they would have had with the landlords. An abatement of rent is when the landlords during COVID said, you don't have to pay rent for a certain period of time because all the businesses are shut down because of government regulations. So that is one thing landlords did. Another thing landlords uh, did in conjunction with abatement or standalone is a deferral saying that you don't have to pay rent right now, but we're going to tack it onto the back end of the lease. Whatever situation, whether it's an abatement situation or a deferral situation, the landlords, most landlords would have had some sort of agreement with their tenants that said, if you default on any payment of rent going forward, uh, the rent that we gave you for free in the abatement situation or that we deferred is now going to be all due immediately. So for instance, if you have a tenant paying $10,000 a month in rent, and they default uh, either on that abatement agreement or the deferral agreement, all of a sudden now that landlord is tacking all that rent back on and now the rent is now $70,000 for the next month, which is an extremely difficult hole for that tenant to dig themselves out of. Uh, my advice to tenants is uh, if you're getting into a situation where you might not be able to make rent for February or March, uh, take out a line of credit, do whatever you can because rent is sacrosanct. Um, communicate with the landlord. Uh, landlords would much rather see a tenant paying at least a little rent than no rent at all or having a dark space because that landlord is still paying property taxes and uh, they have uh, overhead costs to maintain that facility. So um, communicate with the landlord, get yourself through uh, at least a quarter one and uh, pay your rent. Okay. That's all for now. You know where I am. Again, Mike Kwiatkowski, McLeod Law.